only two third down conversions last week. Murray's PAT is blocked and it is scooped and a chance for two for the Baltimore Ravens. And the stunning first quarter continues. Two on the... Knocked away by Young. LaFell, the intended target. Third and short guard. Manning will throw for it. Oh, oh. This side of the field. Trip up. Interception is made. Picked off by Tavon Young. Young. Back inside the 30 to the 27 yard line. The Giants want a penalty marker. There are none on the field. Hey guys, Christina Lindy in here. You know, the one and only for another episode of Hot Off the Press. And you know, I gotta keep switching the style up because that's what you know 50 told me. So I got my very own brother here today, the one and only Baltimore Ravens, Tavon Young. Yeah, you know we all here. <laughs> <laughs> no. Hey, bro. What's up, man? It's Sunday fun day, so we make a family dinner and everything, all that good stuff, and y'all gonna get to know Tay. So let's jump right into the whole interview and everything. So I know when we was coming up, um, going to like Madison and everything, you was playing basketball. So how did the whole like switch? The football come because I know once we got the dubs, it was like yeah. straight football. So, how did all that happen? Man, for real, for real, like once I got in ninth grade, I played like one year, uh, JV, but uh, you know, I wasn't tall, I wasn't nothing special, you know what I'm saying? So, my I talked to my father, he was just like, Man, you might as well just try to play football again. One day, I was in the lunchroom, my man Drew. Uh, he was like, Man, you scared to play football again, man? Just go ahead and sign up. I'm like, Man, nah. And he was like, man, go ahead and sign up because you don't know what's going to happen. Well, so I went and signed up and then just took off from there. So, okay. shout outs to Drew. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Drew. So, um, growing up, who was like your favorite football team? Was it always the Ravens or? Nah, I actually was a Cowboys fan coming up. And why was that? Because my father. Because he liked the um, yeah, Cowboys. Yeah, I just grew up around Cowboys fans, so that's what it was. Okay, so you know the DMV, you know, we slowly but surely are being put on the map. So, you know, we got people like Katie, Joe Hayden, and Brandon Davis. So, people like them, and now we have you putting on for the DMV. So, how does that like feel for you? Uh, it feels great, you know, to be in the same category as them, you know, coming up, watching Joe Hayden, you know, he went to friendly. I watched him play in high school. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Kevin Durant, my favorite basketball player. That's the great. That's a good thing. You know, he's from Maryland, so I always support. I show love to everybody from this area. You know, I want everybody to get on and just be where I'm at now. I'm blessed, and it's a big, and I'm just proud. It's just hard work pay off. Okay, so we all know you went to Temple. For those who don't know, went to Temple in Philly, where you played college football and everything. But besides the football, like, what did you major in while you were there? <laughs> So I, mean, I, ain't, I mean, I just finished school, though. You know, I was a uh, communication major at first. Mm -hmm. Like then, me. You know, that ain't go too well, so I switched majors. Uh, I went to uh, AOD. It stands mm -hmm. for uh, Adult Organizational Development. But, you know, I always knew I wanted to be a football player, so that was that. You know, I'm about to get my degree, though. Okay. So, back to Temple, you're only 5'9", and, you know, a lot of college people, you know, um... All of them will probably say that's like too short for like the professional world. So how did you like basically beat the odds and be like, nah, I can still do it minus my size and all of that? I'm just a size. I'm just a dog. Like if you let if you let people tell you what you can't do, then you ain't nothing out here. That's how I see it. And you know, I was just when I grow up, I was just always that's just how I'm built. That's how I'm built. And I'm just a dog. And I'm sad. I don't let nobody tell me what I can't do. All right, so taking it into the social media world, I seen you hashtag a lot, the whole no limit thing, you know, no master P and all of that. You didn't copy from anything, but what is like no limit to you? Uh, no limit. Uh, you know, first of all, shout out to them. Man. I met, I been with master <laughs> P though. He a cool dude. You know what I'm saying? But uh, no limit to me is just is just what it what it say. No limit. Like there's no limit on anything what you can do, and then that's how I view it. You know, I always preach that all the time, as you can see. Uh, I got it even tatted on my arm, but you know what I'm saying? But it really means something to me. People probably look at it as another hashtag, but no limit really, it means something to me, though. Okay. So let's take it back to the day you got the call that the Ravens wanted you. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Live from Evan J. Bank Stadium in Baltimore, Maryland, I'm Evan Washburn of CBS Sports. And to announce the next pick in the 2016 NFL Draft, the Baltimore Ravens would like to welcome in former Ravens running back Jamal Lewis, who has the pick. With the 104th pick in the 2016 NFL Draft, the Baltimore Ravens select Tavon Young, defensive back, Temple. Where were you at? What was you doing? Who was you with? Uh, I was over my uh my mother, like one of her closest friends. I called her my aunt. Mm -hmm. We was over her house. You know, was, you know, my closest friends were there, my family. Uh, when I got that call, we was just sitting there watching the draft. I'm just watching dudes get drafted. And then I'm like, man, my phone got to ring. So the Ravens <laughs> came up. So I'm like, damn, if I go ahead, that's going to be crazy. Next thing you know, my phone started ringing. It's like, it's a 443 now. I'm like, ah. Oh. Picked the joint. I'm like, I love it. Like, yeah, this Ozzy Newsom, the GM, man. I'm like, oh. So I stand up. I'm like, oh, that. Everybody stopped. Oh, my God. Everybody stopped going crazy. So, you know, it was it was great. And then later on, they had like a little flock that was at the stadium. So I had one day, you know, the fans show love. You know, it was all love that day. All right, so let's act like it's game day. You know, y'all hyped up in the locker room and all of that. How does the whole team prepare, like, in the locker room and all of that? And how do you prepare? Uh, on the game day, I want to say I usually wake up around 9, 9 something. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we all, we could go to the uh, stadium anytime you want. You could go there on your own. So, you know, I get in the car, leave the hotel. They bring up my car, drive down there by myself. You know, drive through, park. You know, you get it, you get out, you walk in, all the fans there. Like, so when you walk in, they all, table, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it, it gets you, it kind of gets you fun, like, going into the stadium, but... It's not the way I really do. I go in there, I stretch. I listen to my music. You know, I throw, I throw in that future, all that. You know, just I just get in my little zone. You know, I, but I, I'm loose with it. Like, I don't be in there like, you know, you see on all these little shows and stuff, people in there shaking their heads all the <laughs> time. I don't do all that. I just, I'm loose. You know, cracking jokes, you know, same person. It's just football. Okay, so... Say you guys lose a game, does the whole energy in the locker room change or y'all like working to fight each other like you fucked this up and you did this or how y'all carry us? Nah, it ain't, it ain't nothing like that. I mean, of course the mood will be different because we ain't win, but mm -hmm. you know, uh, like people, you come in the locker room at first, of course it's always quiet, coach talk, uh, we talk about what we could have done or whatever, but after that, after like 10 minutes out there, you know, people start talking again. Keep, mm -hmm. keep it going. You got to keep going forward. It's the NFL. You won't lose. Like, they get paid just like we do. Okay, so this offseason, you guys had a couple signings and all of that. So, what does that mean for the Ravens and for you? Uh, You know, we just signed a couple new DBs. I mean, we signed Tony Jefferson from the Cardinals and Brandon Carr from the Dallas Cowboys. But, you know, so going forward, you know, we just out here competing every day. You know, most likely I'll probably be moving back into the nickel, but I'm not sure. We just want to see when we get back. But I'm looking forward to the season, and it's going to be a big year for us. I'm looking forward to it. Alright, so let's talk about the girls. How are they, you know, treating you? They treat, they better be treating you well. I'm gonna have to, you know, whoop some ass. Uh, I mean, you know, 
when I first had got drafted or whatever, you know, a few girls came out to cut, you mm -hmm. know. But I had my fun when I first got in. I slid in DM, but I ain't gonna lie. I did have my little fun. But now I'll be just chilling. I'm just focused on football. I'm back on my grind. All right, so, you know, last season, Ravens was kind of, you know, wishy-washy, whatever, kind of up and down season. Seeing you guys take that L to the Pittsburgh Steelers, you know, not a Pittsburgh fan, I'm just saying. Um, so, what do you guys think, you know, you as a player and your team need to do so they can, you know, get to the playoffs next season? Uh, just working hard and just moving forward and just going to the next season. It's just, it's the, it be the little things at the end of the day. We lost that game by the last play, the last seconds of the game. So, that, that little play something early in the game could have just stopped that. So, I see it change just off of one play, but next year we... We pushing forward, man. We want to do everybody next year. That's how I'm doing. All right, so the number 36. Why'd you pick it? I know it's not your favorite number, so why'd you um, pick it? It's actually by default for real, for real. That's, what the, that's the lowest number I could have got last year. I started off with number 43, mm -hmm. which was way worse. But, like, at the camp, you know, some numbers opened up. 36 was the lowest number I could have picked from, so I just went with that. So you plan on like upcoming season changing your jersey number or how's that going? Yeah, you know, I just switched it at 2-3 at 23, so. And what made you do 23? I don't know, just that number looks sweet on the football field. And I'm 23. <laughs> I just turned 23, so why not? Okay, cool. All right, so matter of fact, 23, let's go into what you do on your off time when you're not working. So we... Tore Griffin up, y'all. If y'all don't know what Griffin is, you need to educate yourself. We went to Griffin for Tay's birthday, you know. Pop bottles, bought all the baddies out, all the friends out. Then we ended, you know, with the Migos concert. So, when you're not at the club, like, what all do you like to do for fun? Uh, you know, just like earlier, y'all caught me here watching Netflix. Mm -hmm. You know, I be watching the little jail shows and stuff. I mean, I, I do a little bit of everything. Go to the movie, go to the mall, talk to him. Yes. Talking screen, you know, that ain't always fun. He, you know, it's like now that's my dog though, but you know, I'm just I'm a just chill dude for real. Like I do everything for real. Okay. So being that I know you because I am, you know, the younger sister, I to watch the whole come up. So I keep, you know, people come out the cut now, I can like, you know, they know you and all of this. So would you say people treat you different now or people treat you the same? Like how is the clout for you now? Uh, of course people are going to treat you different. That's anyway, like, if you make it, you know what I'm saying, you get a little bit of change in your pockets. But for the most part, I still got the same friends. I'm around the same people all the time. Like, my circle ain't changed. You're not meeting people. I'm cool with, you know, some other guys from the area that's mm -hmm. on the upcoming too. So, you know, I show support. You know, shout out to E. Shout out to my man 3 -0. Hey, Malik. Shout out to my man 3 -0 Black, you know. Uh, just everybody, you know, shout out to everybody coming to the this shit that I know that uh, been rocking with me since, you know, since I wasn't who I was now. Alright, so coming up, who would you say would be like your favorite football players? Uh, since I was a Cowboys fan, like Emmitt Smith coming up, uh, the Damian Thompson, LT, he's played with the Chargers. I used to like, I mean, I like, uh, Michael Vick, of course, mm -hmm. changed the game. Uh... Ed Reed, you know, around around the way, like sometimes, like when we was playing outside, he used to call me Ed Reed because I usually be getting the seven and stuff. So Ed Reed, there's a lot of players that I like. I mean, I really don't have a favorite player, mm -hmm. but you know, I'm just trying to be the best at what I do. Okay, so maybe like some years from now, you think people will be like, "Oh, Tavon Young's my favorite player." Oh yeah, of course. I mean, I get that now. Even though know, if I don't know they mean it or not or whatever it is, but a lot. Some people say that now. Since college, that I was their favorite player. Like it's people that I know, kids look up to me. Always say I'm their favorite player. Like even one time, my mom, I signed an autograph for one of my mom's coworker's son. Mm -hmm. She said when he gave it to her, when she gave it to her son, she said he st he started crying. Oh, so hey, like you hey, feel hey. me? Like I'm like, man, cuz really bang with me type. Mm -hmm. And one time, like, I got a dude, his, his name D, his son, he really look up to me. So, you know, it's a, it's a couple guys here, uh, but I want the whole world to be like, yeah, man, Tavon, yeah, he a goat. I'm like, you know. Cool, cool. So, you know, I'm smelling the food, stomach's going off. So, when are you going to be, you know, 
going to learn how to cook because, you know, I feel like I only get the phone calls like, oh, sis, you cooking today? It ain't no, oh, hey, sis, how's your day? It's just straight to the food. So when you're on school over there, going to learn because I ain't going to always be I ain't never trying to learn how to cook. Like, but you can't survive you can long there, You know what I'm saying? One day, girl, come through, cook. For me, you know, in the future or something. I was gonna say, so you have other jobs coming in? Oh, no, 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 no. But no, yeah, but yeah, so one day, hopefully, got a girl, you know, she come in, cook, whip up for me, you know what I'm saying? He can't cook, I can't cook. <laughs> so my only thing is going to be eating garbage or I got a, a meal plan or something, you know? Ask me how to make tea. That's how I know he can't cook. Oh, man. <laughs> That's sad. That's, sad. That's how I know. Real. That's sad. What the hell? All right, you want to do like the outside job? I can go whenever. Mm -hmm. All right. All right, guys. So before we go eat, you know, I have to do my favorite question because it's good to know people, you know, have a plan for themselves. So how do you want to be remembered, you know, months from now, years from now, all of that? I just want to be remembered as the guy that was always overlooked, that uh, turned nothing into something. Mm -hmm. And, you know, just be the best to ever do it. Because everybody would. Okay. And be welcome. <laughs> hey. <laughs> nah, don't we all? Well, you know, thanks, bro, for letting me pull up to the crib today. Don't hit my head. You fucking <laughs> meatball the hell. All right, guys. So, you know, go ahead and hit that like button, comment button, subscribe, all of that. You know, fuck with me. You want to get booked and all of that. Hit me up. I got you. Christine Lenny, Hot Off the Press, and we're done. Hey.